In this mini lecture, we're going to cover a method of plant propagation that's really easy to do at home, and in many ways, it's quite similar to stem cuttings. So what is layering? Well, layering is defined as a form of rooting cuttings in which adventitious roots are initiated on a stem while it is still attached to the parent plant. So, it's really just like a stem cutting except for you never actually cut it off the parent plant. Sometimes you'll see plants actually layer themselves naturally. As you can see in the picture here, a lot of times if you have a shrub with some low-growing branches that are in connection with the soil and, and they end up getting covered up with soil or mulch, what will happen is roots will form on the covered portion of the stem and once those roots form, you can cut that piece of the branch off and have a whole new plant. Now layering is not a type of plant propagation that is typically used commercially because it's not very practical. It requires a lot of hand labor and it's time consuming and it takes up a lot of space. But it's very practical for you if you're propagating plants at home because it doesn't require any special equipment at all. It's very easy. So why does it work so well and why is it so easy to do at home? Well, the great thing about layering is that your daughter plant, which in this case is called a layer, so for cuttings, the daughter plant is called a cutting, either a stem cutting, a root cutting, or a leaf cutting. Um, with layering, the daughter plant is called a layer, and the layer is still connected to the parent plant while it's forming the adventitious roots. That means it's still getting water and nutrients from the parent plant, and it's also getting the full benefit of the photosynthesis producing sugar for the whole parent plant instead of just a few leaves on a cutting. Um, so it's still plugged into the main resources. So one really great thing you don't have to worry about is moisture loss. With cuttings, we're very concerned about keeping your cuttings in a humid environment and so they don't lose too much water so they can root. And in keeping them in that moist environment, sometimes it gets too moist and then you have some of you have had already some fungus growing in your propagation environment, so it can get tricky. With layering, you don't have to worry about it. It's still connected to the roots of the parent plant, so you don't have to do anything to create a humid environment for layering, which is great. Um, another thing that makes layering work, the key to getting those adventitious roots to form is to exclude light from the rooting zone. So there are many different types of layering which we'll go over, but they all involve covering at least part of the stem with media of some type to keep it in the dark so that oxen will build up in that area and adventitious roots will begin to form. A lot of times layering also involves girdling, cutting, or bending of the stem. This creates a wound and a plant's response to wounding as often as we have discussed adventitious root formation. Also, something like girdling is going to stop the flow of sugars in that area, so you have a buildup of energy source at the area to be used for the formation of those adventitious roots. And then finally, our seasonal patterns are going to be important for layering. Just like with root cuttings, layering is best done in late winter or early spring before the plant starts putting on new vegetative growth for the new growth season. Um, once it starts putting on new vegetative growth, new stems, new leaves, there's not as much stored carbohydrates and energies in the plant for adventitious root formation. It'll still work if you layer the plant at other times of year, but in late winter and early spring, again, you have the highest level of stored carbohydrates in the plant that can be used to produce those adventitious roots. So now let's talk about the different types of layering. The very easiest is simple layering, or you may hear some people refer to it as ground layering. This has to be done on a plant that has low branches, so a shrub essentially. You can't really do simple layering on a tree because the branches are too far away from the ground. So basically you just take a flexible, fairly young branch, usually you want something that's no older than one year old, and you bend it down to the ground and peg it into the ground about six to nine inches from the tip. You even could probably go back as far as a foot, but you wouldn't want to go any farther back on the branch than that. So you'll peg it down. An easy way to peg it down is using these sort of hoop-shaped pegs. You can get those at most garden stores. I have one pictured here. However, if you don't want to be that high-tech about it, you can also just put a rock on it. So you're going to cover up the pegged area with media or soil. 
So if you do this in the spring, and again, early spring is the best time to do layering, that layer will have rooted by the fall, and then in the fall you can come in, cut it off from the parent plant, and you have a whole new daughter plant. If you do your layering in the summer, it's not going to root until the following spring. All right, now these rules about the seasons, this will apply for all the types of layering that we're going to discuss. So if you layer in spring, it'll be ready by fall. If you layer in summer, it'll be ready by the next spring. You can even layer as late as fall, and it'll produce roots by the next spring. All right, compound or serpentine layering is very similar to simple layering, but instead of just covering up one portion of the stem and letting that root in, you're covering up multiple sections of the stem with media. Now this is also sometimes referred to as French layering. For this, you need a plant with very long, flexible shoots. Otherwise, you won't be able to bend multiple portions to peg down and cover with media. Um, and so you just alternately cover and uncover this horizontal, long, flexible shoot, just as you see in the picture there. And each of the covered portions will root, and then you have multiple new plants from that one stem. Now, obviously, you need a really long, flexible plant for this. This is a good way to propagate a lot of woody vines. And in particular, they used to use this technique for the propagation of grapes, and you still can. It's just they've come with more efficient ways to do it now. But for the home, it's a very, again, simple, foolproof way to propagate a vine, such as a grapevine. Mound or stool layering is the only form of layering that is still used commercially. And that's because it's a little easier to mechanize this process. Um, it is used commercially to propagate clonal rootstocks of hard to root plants. And what I mean by that is some woody plants are nearly impossible to root by stem cuttings or leaf bud cuttings. And as you'll remember, leaf blade and leaf blade and petiole cuttings just aren't going to work for woody plants. So one way to get around these really hard to root by cutting plants is to use layering. Now with mound layering, they will propagate these hard to root plants and then they use them as root stocks for grafting. Now we'll talk about grafting later this semester but when you're grafting you either have seedling root stocks where you just sowed a bunch of seed, you grew a bunch of plants and they serve as the root stocks for your graft. Or if you want more uniform grafted plants you can asexually propagate your root stocks. So we can't asexually propagate them by cuttings if they're hard to root plants so we'll layer them. A good example of this is apples. Apples are grafted commercially and to get those root stocks because apples can't be propagated by cuttings really at all, they do this mound layering to get a bunch of clonal uniform root stocks for the apple grafts. Now here if we're using mound or stool layering, again those names are interchangeable, we call the daughter plants stool shoots rather than layers. So let me explain how mound layering works. You have young one-year-old plants planted in the field. They let it grow for a season to become established and then they come in and cut it down to just about an inch above the ground, very close to the ground as you can see in the picture. That inch portion above the ground is then covered with a mound of soil or mulch and new shoots begin to grow up through it and each time the shoots grow through that mound of soil or mulch, they will cover them up again until they become fairly tall. What happens is then within the mounded area of soil or mulch, roots form on each of those new shoots. And so once that happens, you can come in and separate off each of those stool shoots and it's a new plant. So you can see this would be easy to mechanize. You can just come through with a, a cutting machinery cut them all off at the base, mulch it, and then just keep mulching it until it's time to harvest them. And this way you can see you get quite a few new plants just from the one original plant. And here you can just see what the stool shoots look like once they've been cut off. Now usually you have new mother plants every year because once the mother plants become too old or too large, they're not going to work as well. They're not going to produce as many new stool shoots. So again, you're using about a year old parent plant each time to produce all of these new stool shoots. You can do mound layering at home. And here's another sort of variation on mound layering that's 
interesting way to propagate plants in containers by mound layering. So containerized layering is pretty much just the same thing as mound layering but in a container. So what you do, you have your parent plant, you cut it off near the surface of the media, and then they've placed a bottomless container on top of that and then done the mounding process. Again, they mound soil over the cutoff shoot of the parent plant, let new shoots grow through it, mound it again, and slowly add deeper layers of soil until there's a nice good area of soil there for the roots to form and again you have those stool shoots. So this is a nice way to do this in a small space. Trench layering is another form of layering. It's not frequently used but it is an option. With trench layering the parent plant is originally planted often at a slant. It just makes it easier for the rest of the process unless it's a really flexible plant. And again, we're not using a mother plant that's any older than one or two years old. After that, it just becomes harder for it to effectively produce new layers. So it's planted at an angle and then a sort of trough or trench of soil is added around it. The plant is pegged down, the entire plant is pegged down into this trench as you can see in the picture and then covered up with a couple of inches of soil or media. What will happen is each one of those buds on the branches of the original plant will break and grow a new plant and roots will form because again you've excluded light by covering it with a couple of inches of media. So by doing this, very similar to mound layering in a way except for instead of cutting it off at the base you're just bending over and pegging down the whole plant. Once each of those new shoots has formed roots, again, they can be separated from the parent plant and planted out as new plants. Yet another form of layering that's pretty similar to mound, container, and trench layering is drop layering. It's really a combination of division and layering. Um, for drop layering, you're not cutting it off at the base, you're not bending it over at all. Basically, you just dig a deep hole and you bury your plant in that hole with only the branch tips exposed. This only works for well-grown, well-branched shrubs because you're only going to get as many new plants as you have branches. So if it isn't already a well-branched shrub, you're not going to get many new plants off it and it's just not really worth it. Um, so this isn't used for a lot of plants, but it does work on dwarf rhododendrons, of course, you probably could do a not dwarf rhododendron, a large rhododendron, but that would be kind of a pain to dig a hole big enough to do drop layering on that. Some conifers, boxwoods, and barberries will all work. Basically, again, you just bury the whole thing with only the branch tips exposed, leave it be for a few months, and then dig it back up. And when you do that, each of those branches will have formed adventitious roots. You can cut them off, and each one of those will be a new plant. And then finally, the last form of layering that we're going to talk about is air layering. This is a type of layering that's often done on house plants, although it can also be done on plants outdoors. It's one that students in my other class do quite frequently, and if you make an appointment with the teaching assistant to do your layering assignment, this is what you'll be doing. Air layering is also one of the oldest forms of propagation. The ancient Chinese came up with this method long ago and used it to propagate camellias. So the first thing you do with air layering is you girdle the stem by removing a strip of bark around that stem. Now this is very important. When you're girdling the stem, you need to do it at a place no more than a foot back from the tip of the branch. All right, so six inches to a foot back from the tip of the branch you can do your girdling. You don't want to go any farther back on the plant than that because then you'll be on old growth that won't root as well and you'll be girdling a much thicker stem. You don't want to ever girdle the trunk of something or a really long branch because then you've created such a large wound that the plant won't be able to heal it or produce adventitious roots and you can actually kill a plant that way. I once had a student who did not follow the directions about that part of air layering and he girdled the whole base of a very large plant and then it died. Of course there's no benefit in that anyways because the farther down you girdle it, even if it were to work, which it wouldn't, 
well, that's that much of the plant you're using and that much less of the plant you have to make more plants. If you're doing this out at the branch tips, there's lots of small branches. You can error layer a lot of them and get more plants, more new plants from your parent plant. So again, girdle the stem no more than six inches to a foot back from the tip of the branch. And the strip that you girdle should only be one to two inches wide. It's important to girdle it thoroughly, remove all the bark all the way around the twig, otherwise it may just heal instead of producing roots. You can then apply rooting hormone to the exposed wound. This is optional. It may cause it to root more uniformly with better quality roots, but most plants will root even without the rooting hormone for air layering. The girdled area is then covered with moistened sphagnum moss or potting soil. You want it to be pretty wet, but if you pick up a handful of it, you should squeeze it to get out any excess water. You don't want it to be completely saturated. And then you're going to put that around the girdled area and wrap it with plastic to keep it in place. The ends of the plastic then get tied. I usually use twist ties, and that keeps it from, of course, falling off. And then if you're doing this outside, you want to put aluminum foil over that plastic. The aluminum foil helps reflect light and keep it from getting too hot because if you do this in the spring and it's going to be rooted by fall, that means it has to make it through summer. And it, particularly if you're in North Carolina, it can get really hot here in the summer. So that added layer of foil is going to help for air layering plants outside in a greenhouse where you have more control over the temperature, it's often not necessary. So air layering can be done on a lot of house plants. It's frequently done on rubber plants. They work quite well. And it can also be done on some woody plants outside. The nice thing about this too, again, with all these forms of layering, you can just do it outside. There's no climate control or humidity control necessary. I stand corrected. Air layering was not our last type. This is our last type. Tip layering is actually a type of layering that occurs naturally in a lot of your brambles, as listed here. It's very similar to simple layering. However, in simple or ground layering, you're moving back six to nine inches from the tip of the branch and covering just a portion there. So the tip of the branch is actually still exposed. With tip layering, um, what happens, these plants just naturally near the end of the growing season, the canes begin to arch over. Um, and the branch tips sort of elongate. They have these small, curled, weird-looking leaves on them. And in the wild, they often just end up buried in the ground. But if you're growing bramble fruit on your own, and when you see it start to grow this way with the arching over canes and the elongated tips, what you want to do is just bury the tip of that branch. So you're burying the tip of the branch as opposed to going six to nine inches back and burying just a portion of the stem. Once you bury the tip of that branch or shoot, what will happen is a small new plantlet will form there at the tip. You harvest that and you have a new plant. So those are the different types of layering. I've posted an in the garden video for you as well, and that's really going to help you see how this whole process works.